Hello everybody, welcome to part two of the Minecraft plugin development GUI setup. So in the last video, I've shown you how to code a plugin using my framework called the foundation to have animated buttons and multiple menu pages. In this video, we're just going to be continuing where we started. As I promised, I'm going to be showing you the animated menu titles, how to code them, and also how to code uh, buttons that are moving. So remember, we had menu one class and we finished in around on post display. This method is displayed. Uh, this method is called after the menu has been rendered. There is a this.animate method which can basically call a method every single tick. So to animate a title, we can simply utilize the same thing, right? And you can just ignore the things below because I already prepared them for later. Basically what we can do, you can just type in this animate and let's say that I want the menu to be animated every tick, uh, the menu title to be animated every tick. We can just do something like this, new menu runnable right here. Now. Inside of this, if you have menu title called hello world and you want the color to change from black to red, you could either just come up with super complicated Java calculations that are going to move this like this, or as you guessed it, foundation already provides a method for you. We have a slider uh, interface, very simple interface. You can call next on it. And one of the classes that implements that is actually called colored text slider. So the colored text slider is very simple slider that takes in a string and the from is how you initialize the class. The from simply uh, can take in whatever. However, I'm just going to be taking the my first animated menu. Maybe I can make it shorter. So just call it animated menu. And also um, in the animated slider, please do not use colors in the title because you need to only use colors in the primary and the secondary. The primary is the thing that you've seen on the screen. And then the secondary is the other color everywhere else. And you can even make it bold as I shown you right here. So I'm going to be sliding, for example, beautiful gold color uh, between black colors. And all I have to do now is inside the run method, just call next. And here I'm going to be having to actually call set title and then the text slider to next. And I can convert this into a Lambda and setting titles is actually safe to be run on another thread uh, to increase your plugins performance. By the way, set title method is implemented in the menu class. What it does, it sets the title as a field. And also if the menu is opened, it actually sends the menu title packet to the player. This works across all Minecraft versions. If you open up the update inventory title, it goes to a class called remain in foundation, which is just dealing with uh, packets. And as you can see, this is quite complicated. So foundation really, really makes sure to lift all of that NMS garbage for you so that all you're gonna do is call one method and it works on all Minecraft versions down to actually 1.7.10. By the way, guys, quick update when it comes to the get title. So if you attempt to navigate to another page and then go back, it'll actually complain that the text in a slider may not contain colors. This is because when we're setting the title, uh, where is it? Right here, text slider dot next set title. This method actually updates the field right here. So actually this is not going to work. What we have to do, we have to scroll up and we have to actually take a copy and make this into a field like this one. And then this field will never change. So this is safe to use. There you have it. Now we have a beautiful animation in the menu title. Now, if you want this to go a little bit slower, we can just increase uh, the period tick, for example, to two. Now hex colors are not supported, which is a let down. We plan to do it later, but you still have many, many colors at your disposal. So feel free to experiment with these two and you can end up having beautiful animated titles. Now, likewise to a text slider, there is an item slider, as you guessed it. And this my friends, is very simple slider that takes in a list of item stack and it works as following. So you call an item slider from and here you simply uh, type in the filler 
and then the highlighted and this can either be a material basically comp material is just the compatible version of the buckets material class or you can use the good old item stack or you can just use item creator so i'm gonna go with the item creator and we're basically gonna make the gray stained uh, pane as the filler so this is going to basically go everywhere on one row and then the nether star is going to be the slided item that moves on the menu and then you can actually configure the width so this is the width how many slots you want to take so i want to take one two three four five six seven eight nine slots i want the items to basically bounce in the entire menu row now when it comes to actually animating this again you can go ahead and call in this animate I am 99% certain it's safer to call it on the main thread, so I'm just going to call animate instead of animate async. And then inside the runnable, what do we have to do? We have to actually get the next list of items, because what this will do, every time you call next, you are going to end up with 9 items, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, uh, 9, and then the actual item that is supposed to be moving is going to be one of these nine items okay that's how it works and then we actually have to manually call the set item method in the menu class and we can iterate for uh for the slot this is actually the slot number so if the slot goes from zero to the size and the size is nine we can actually set it now the way that this works if you just call set item slot right here and you open up the menu, it will actually start from the slot zero. We want to start animation from the slot number nine. This is the slot number eight. This is the slot number nine. And we want the animation to run across the entire row like this. That is why we ops offset this. So nine plus, and this is going to go from nine plus zero, which is nine to nine plus, I don't know, nine, which is 18. All right. That's how it's supposed to work. If you do have this set up, you can see we have a beautiful animated slider that goes to the end and then it starts at the front what you can also do is you can check if the um if the items at the last item is the nether star so this is basically the uh, the move moved item and if we've basically reached the end you can simply call cancel for the menu runnable if you open up the menu runnable you can see that the cancel method is right here and this will basically end uh, the animation when the nether star reaches this slot. If you want to do that, that is also completely fine. Now, one thing I wanted to teach you before we finish this video, let's say that I want to go to this and I want to go to get size minus four. So I want to position the uh, button that we made last time from here because this is now conflicting from the animation and i want to go it i want to push it down here okay i want to push it down here hopefully it's not going to be there it's going to be down here and i want to basically change uh, the button so not only i want to animate the value or the lore if you will but i want to actually animate the item stack so how can we change the clock right here well this is sort of a creative solution <clears throat> that goes down to knowing java java simply lets you create fields right here let's just say that we can create a toggle as a private boolean and putting an access modifier in an inner class like that in an anonymous class doesn't really matter and here we can simply animate it like this if toggle is true then we're going to go with the clock if this is not the case we're just going to go with i don't know a compass like this or maybe we can change this to the other compass and then we can simply shift uh the toggle and i'm going to show you what this will do okay well this is kind of funny it's not here it's actually here because i screwed up the get size minus four it's supposed to be minus five and then you can see that it's sort of bouncing like crazy well, this is because of the animate the ticks is set on one so there's two solutions to it you can either increase this to a 10 or even 20 or dun -dun -dun -dun, magic so what do we have to do here we can actually utilize the modulo operator in java because we know that 20 ticks equals one second and if you want the button right here only to be changed every second and you run the animation like a maniac every one tick 
Then we can simply have a field called text lift and you can keep the toggle right here and we can only change the toggle, we can only flip the toggle when we can increase the text and we check if the division by 20 gives zero rest. So in mathematics, <clears throat> in mathematics, if I divide 20 by 20, I'm going to end up with 1.00 and what this will do, this will simply check if the uh, the decimal spaces, the rest after the division is zero, right? Because anything else doesn't. Let me show you what I mean. Again, one divided by 20 is not zero, zero, right? Two divided by 20 is not zero, zero, but 20 divided by 20 is one. That is a whole number. So we can actually take use of standard Java or math operations, and then we can simply uh, keep the toggle right here, and then <clears throat> it's going to work as expected. Beautiful. All right, guys, now you have enough animations uh, that you could ever dreamed of in a GUI. And I've even placed beautiful debug right here. It's going to flip. It's going to make your console cry. That is it for today. I really urge you to join my training project Orion because not only it's better in the sense everything is laid out step by step, there is really good structure to it. It requires no previous coding knowledge, and it's really the only step-by-step -step training that is available for a micro plugin development on the market. Not only that, but else I also can help you twice per week on something called live coaching calls, where sometimes I spend up to 20 minutes helping one student with his issue. You can literally unmute yourself and share your screen, and I can look at your code and assist you. Thank you so much. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you're not going to overuse the animations. Okay, don't go bonkers like this. Be safe. Take it easy. And I'll see you next time.